Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're at Cesar Chavez Park in Long Beach, California. I'm hanging out with my buddy Chris from Propel, and we're checking out a new one from Reese and Mueller. This is the Supercharger. It comes stock with two batteries. This thing is, have you ever seen this movie? It's called The Long Way Around with Ewan McGregor. <laughs> I don't think so. It's a good movie, but he's the actor who is from Star Wars and uh, he and his buddy go to Africa and they get the, they, they do a big search actually for like which motorcycles are gonna get them across the continent, right? And they, they okay. pick some and they go on this epic adventure. And I feel like this electric bike is very much like that because it's made with super high-end parts. It's got two high capacity batteries for almost a kilowatt hour of capacity. A really nice charger that actually you only have to charge it in this one location and it balances both of these batteries. Bulletproof motor, this is the Bosch Performance Line Speed. So you could actually, you know, zip around pretty quickly if you're a commuter or something like that. It makes it a lot more fun. You got right up here with the grips, ergonomic locking with those dual hand positions so your hands won't get tired. And there's a ton to talk about and comfort is one of my big I, just an area that I always gravitate to, right? Especially if you're going a long way. So it comes with an air fork here, 100 millimeters of travel, 15 millimeter through axle on the front. And then these kind of custom spec uh, Schwabi Rock Razor tires here. They've got Evo Revolution Race Guard, which usually doesn't come on these tires. That was like custom done for Reese and Mueller. Tubeless easy, so you could run tubeless, although I've heard with high speed uh, electric bikes, sometimes you don't want to lower the pressure too much. It's just, it's more dangerous technically that you could, if you were to like burp the tire as you're going really yeah. fast and you hit a bump and the tire can totally, you know, lose all its pressure a little faster than a kid with a tube, so. But the puncture protection makes a ton of sense for me. Like if you're going, maybe doing trekking or touring with this bike. Absolutely, yeah. It's kind of cool that they, you know, and that's the sort of stuff that you don't necessarily see all the time or you don't necessarily know that it exists but it, you know they're they're always looking to elevate that experience for us a lot of times people are swapping the tires to the supermoto x but the reality is like you said if you're doing more off-road then having something like the rock razor makes a lot of sense yeah yeah i love that we were actually like digging into the specs back at the shop um, i i like the colors that we got here it's kind of this metallic blue but they also have another one that's gray i'm just gonna cut to show you the shop real quick because that's a nice color so we're back in the shop. This is Propel. We've got a whole lineup of different Reese and Miller models. And I thought this would be cool to just show you the different colors. So this is the other option. Do you remember what it's called, Chris? Urban Metallic Gray. Urban Metallic Gray. Yeah, I like that. And then, you know, this is the other bike that we had out. You can see that there's the, the optional second battery to extend the range. In this case, they've got this like zippered bag thing on it, but just being able to step through, store some stuff or go long range. Maybe you've got kind of a his and hers set up with touring potential, high speed potential, very cool. Isn't that cool guys? So just getting back to the bike. I mean, this thing is fully loaded. You've got uh, a folding lock on the back from Schwabi. It's key to like to the batteries. So you don't have to have all these extra keys that could get lost or just inconvenient and take your time up trying to figure out which one's which. Fabric water bottle with like a special mounting point right there on the top tube, down tube. I think that's really cool. But if you weren't using that, you've still got another bottle cage boss's location right there on the down tube, right where you're used to having it on most regular bikes, but not all electric bikes make room for that. And I, so being, being that they have like the power tube internally mounted batteries, it's really nice that they've kept some of those extra accessory mounting points. And then you don't even have to waste it because you've got the lock that's built into this little special, like here, I want to get this off real quick and show you this mounting point right here. I mean, that's what a great place to put that. It stays out of the way of uh, the seat post, the saddle, and in this case, we've got a Thudbuster ST short travel. So you get a little bit of comfort back here. This is a hard tail, and that really complements the front. So I was just trying to give you, paint this picture of like the grips from Ergon, the saddle from Ergon, the tires that have a, a broad range of tire pressure, including tubeless ready. We've got a belt drive here. It's quiet, it's reliable. It's just like everything is dialed all the way up. And on this one, we actually have uh, the Kiox display, the color, removable display. I love this thing. It's even got the little micro USB charging port on the bottom. So I'm, I'm telling you all the positive stuff. I guess I put that in the bottom like that. There we go, clicks in. I'm telling you all the like, isn't it awesome? But 
it's a little bit more expensive. So $8,759 plus another $118 if you want to upgrade from the Intuvia, which I like on its own, but it might be worth it, you know, to get the Kiox. It's so removable. It's tough. It's got a Gorilla Glass cover. This thing has integrated lights. The headlight has these like side slicer blade things. So you're going to get a little bit more visibility. It's got a horn. Let's try to find the horn button. There it is. Oh boy. So you can get people kind of like out of your way a little bit or noticing you if you were driving in traffic. And that's going to be a little bit more pronounced than a bell, which we see on most other electric bikes. Awesome kickstand mounted right where you want it. Very clear of the crank arms. Hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter front and rear with these Magura MT4 brake levers. They're the MT4Es. So see, they've got that little, little bit of movement right there. And that sends an activation to the brake light. This is the Supernova M99 metal, I believe aluminum alloy enclosure. Great positioning, the Bibia adjustable like rubber band thing for the rack. It's just like fully kitted out three sizes. We're looking at the medium right here. Yeah, it's the 49. So just 46 centimeter, 49 and 53 centimeter. And we weighed this with, because it comes with both battery packs and everything as is with, it's got that front rack, the rear rack, everything you're seeing here, including the lock. And it was 67.1 pounds. Yep. Which, yeah. you know, it's actually kind of surprising to me because I've weighed other electric bikes that are like 80 pounds. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, and you figure, you know, just with some of the minor accessories, you're talking about 15, 20 pounds. You it's 2.4 so. pounds for that folding lock all, all on its own right there. Yeah. And, but a lot of the weight is positioned right where you'd want it in the middle of the frame. And having a mid-drive motor like this, I mean, there are so many mid-drive electric bikes now to choose from. I really like Bosch because they have good warranty support. It's like two-year comprehensive and they actually partner with Magura. Those are the guys that make the brakes here for service in North America, which is where we're at right now. So it's a really good ecosystem. And one of the other benefits of Magura relationship, um, I just think, I, have you worked with them? Like you're, you're a shop, you've been selling Reese yeah. and Mueller for a long time. What's it been like with Bosch service for you? It's been great. I mean, it's one of the reasons why we really push for them because, uh, you know, something that we've talked about before is it's not really standard so much specifically in the electric bike business or the bike industry in general. But I feel like Bosch is starting to, you know, really try to develop certain standards and quality control. And I feel like that's just part of it, like having a good supply chain for parts, making sure that parts are available and parts are available for years to come. Oh yeah, that's it's a big a really, thing. Really big thing. And you know, making parts backwards compatible wherever possible. Uh, and I feel really good about being able to support my customer. Cause you know, especially a bike like this, you're spending eight, eight nine thousand dollars $9,000. Yeah. You know, you don't want to buy a bike and then a couple years from now, you're not able to get the parts for it and then it's just worthless. And we've seen that happen with other brands. That's the reality of it. Yeah, I've seen it too. Even with some like big name brands, I'm not going to mention here, but a couple <laughs> come to mind and it's like so disappointing because people have paid a ton of money for like a really beautiful internally mounted battery, awesome looking e-bike. And then like the display will change. And then the company is, didn't just, they don't support like the three-year-old display and you're, you can't use the bike without the display. Bosch does a really good job of that, like giving you actual display choices. So being able to upgrade with the, the Kiox here, I, I like that, right? This, so we're going to go into that more. I'm trying to make this a review, but in a lot of ways with a bike like this, there's not a lot to complain about other than like, well, it's a little heavier cause it's got the, you know, it's two batteries and everything like that. Uh, and hey, it costs a little bit more money. And there's one more con that I like to, can you think of it? Uh, Lead time? Yeah, well, that's something depending. It's a question you know, mark. Depending, sometimes it takes a little while to get these things built. So. Why? Well, they're built for you in Germany, which is it's like custom nice. spec for you. So yeah. at least when you get a bike, you know it's brand new. It hasn't been sitting in the warehouse for a couple of years, which that's true. Can happen, but uh, you know, and then sometimes for us, like we try to bring in bikes that are particularly popular. We try to carry some inventory, but you know, and people can demo them. This is like one of yeah. your demo bikes, right? That's right. Yeah. This is cool. Okay, so I'm gonna hit some more specs. Yeah, cool. I'm sorry, put you on the spot. I like Chris because you know he's honest with us and stuff, and it's kind of a relaxed environment. So just coming back to the frame. This is a medium sized frame. I like how the colors here, they've got like some highlights, but they use a lot of black that really ties in. Look at these like wide plastic fenders tend to be very durable. Plastic can be a little bit noisy 
these sometimes, but these ones are extra thick and they've got those extra support arms right there. You look at the rims here. These are 35 millimeters. They're a little bit wider and they've got those reinforcement eyelets and that's gonna give you a little bit of more strength than you see on some of the other just basic rims. Black spokes, black front rack, three kilogram max weight. And that's where the headlight and the horn are mounted. The trade-off of this rack is that, see like the light and the horn point where you steer, but your gear can kind of dump to the side, right? It's not like uh, a head tube mounted rack that stays straight and can support a little bit more weight. So this is more like, again, if you're bike packing or something, you've got like something lightweight, um, sleeping bag or something up there. And then you've got like a ton of capacity on the rear and some of these proprietary like clip on, you know, positioning pieces here. I'm trying to think, there we go, 20 kilogram max weight on that one. What yeah, were you gonna say, Chris? So this is the MIK system. So some of the bikes you might have seen before have the rack time system, but this is MIK, it's a newer system and it's more open source. So different bag manufacturers uh, can work with it. And you can take a bag or a basket and you can actually just put this mount on there. Cool. Which will have a quick release on and off, which is a nice feature. Okay, also black, also, you know, it's a it's a fairly custom rack, but it almost looks like you could remove it if you really wanted to. Is that am I seeing yeah, that? Yeah. You could, yeah. I mean, it's very useful, but if technically, if you wanted to, like Chris is saying, love the light positioning and stuff that we talked about before. And I really feel like, you know, just looking at the back of this bike and and the saddle position and stuff, being able to lower that seat post all the way down and still have clearance for your stuff on the rack. See how it's positioned a little bit further back. These are 27.5 tires and then i think 2.3 right yeah 2.35 2.35 yeah i was gonna they're a little bit higher volume which gives you some more comfort a little bit more traction and float which could be useful if you you're kind of going out of bounds on an adventure ride um yeah. not quite plus size on these but you know worth calling out and then back to that seat post here getting a suspension seat post right out of the gates is is pretty nice this one's pretty tough um, 31.6 millimeters on the post diameter, and then they actually have a shim there, so it's slightly wider. So this thing is, I think it's it's the kind of seat post dimension that gives you strength and then a lot of options if you wanted to put an narrower post, like maybe you have a really expensive high-end carbon fiber. Yeah. Uh, what's the company that makes those really fancy seat posts? Well, Suspension? Connect, or previously known as uh, Body Float. Body Float, yeah, yeah. Connect. So yeah. just kind of calling it out, trying to give you some specs. Of course, back at the website, I have all the specs. I try to record everything, like the weight, the length, try to answer your questions here. But we haven't talked a lot about drivetrain. Um, that's where I wanna go next with Chris, like get his feedback on this. We talked about the Bosch motor here. I've seen some other companies like tip the motor up and integrate it a little bit more with the frame. You know, Reese and Mueller, for whatever reason, I think they do a lot more reinforcement for strength. Their, their frames tend to be heavy duty. And then they've got kind of the bubble casing here with the plastic. This is this is classic, what we're looking at here. A little chain ring guard, so maybe your pants won't get snagged on that as easily, and then you're not gonna get that, that belt um, coming off track. And it has the CDX center track design, so that's gonna keep it on track as well. Quick release on both wheels, so you can do trail maintenance very easily and quickly. And then we've got that, that roll-off speed hub and this is the electronically shifted one. So you can see there's some buttons up here. There's an M and up and a down. And then we've got the E15, right? 14. E14. <laughs> I want one more. And it's because it's a 14 speed. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, super wide range, 526 degrees a gear range, which is quite large. Hmm. And uh, can we put that into perspective for people real quick? Because like, yeah, I I'm used to seeing 11 to 32. 11 to 36 and then we got like the SRAM Eagle which was 11 to 50 right right and that's that's almost 500 degrees and this is like 526 you said that's right yeah so yeah definitely one of the widest but you know generally speaking on 11 speed derailleur you're, you're going to be 400 or so on the yeah. upper end of that so something like that with the 11 to 50 or you know or so you're going to be a little higher but well the takeaway and the reason I'm calling that out is because you've got three extra steps compared to an 11 speed. And so that means like finer increments, but kind of not really, cause you have such a big range. So this means you're gonna be able to start and climb very easily. And you're gonna be able to keep up a little bit more easily at those high speeds. That's super relevant when you have a high speed motor that's capable of supporting up to 28 miles per hour. Yeah, and, be, three. and beyond that, you have that super low gear for climbing. So it just, it really gives you the full range. So yep. it's, you know, people that are kind of touring cross country or whatever the case may be, you might have a lot of airy terrain, but this is something that could definitely handle that and you could dial in your cadence to 
whatever you want. Yeah, and there's like some auto shifting stuff and multiple shifting, we're gonna get into that. But the weight is a little bit more, like that's part of why it costs more, that's also why it weighs, do you remember that some of the weight stats? Cause we talked about a traditional derailleur being like maybe a pound and a half or something with yeah, cassette. Yeah, I believe it's just uh, it's about like three and a half pounds for the roll off hub, so. Yeah, yeah a pound or two. Yeah, so you're, you're adding a little bit there. Uh, you have the benefit of a lot less maintenance uh, mm -hmm. on these and just pretty much lasts forever, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty wild. Cool, cool. I'm gonna get another close up on this and I'm gonna be putting the camera on the frame later when I do a ride, but you'll notice how clean this is and how tough it is. If the bike does tip to the side or you're going through some brush, there's really nothing to get scraped or maybe like a log or a curb. You can, you can make contact with a traditional derailleur when everything's internal like this, like Chris was saying, it kind of lasts forever. Um, yeah, Roloff's known for doing a really good job on their stuff. Okay, sweet. So we are talking about the Bosch Performance Line motor. They do tend to make a little bit more noise because there is this reduction gearing going on. I mentioned before, it's like a smaller sprocket. It's 22 teeth right here, okay? Versus like the equivalent would be two and a half times that because this spins at two and a half revolutions for every single crank arm revolution. Basically, it's using a reduction gear. Um, and that keeps the belt like a little higher and it's very quick to start and stop. But again, some of the noise and there is a little bit of drag here if the motor is not turned on because it's having to do some of that reduction gearing as you pedal. Not a huge deal. It's something that all the Bosch Performance Line motors um, present but worth calling out, that's another one of those, you know, cons or whatever. I'm trying to do uh, this bike justice and do like a full review. The battery packs here, I'm just opening this cover. I like the way Reese Mueller has done this. See, they've got the, the cover that's connected to the frame. It's not gonna be dropped or lost as easily as if it could come completely off. And then we've got the PowerTube 500. We have two of these. This one's just the easiest to show. A little fabric like handle built right in. Some of the other companies have like extra big plastic things and it, it just adds weight. So this is actually a lightweight design from Reese and Mueller. The pack itself weighs about 6.3 pounds and each one of these is 36 volts, 13.4 amp hours. So again, when you multiply it all together, it's about a kilowatt hour with those two battery packs, which just gives phenomenal range. I estimated like 60 to maybe even 160 mile range, depending on what level of assist you're on, how hard you're pedaling. There's gonna be a little bit more drag here because of those tires and the weight and stuff, but it's a very efficient system. You know, they do a pretty good job. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe next we should talk about the Kiox. I already took it off earlier. Uh, all the batteries and stuff are plugged in and actually, this is the charger, so it's a four amp charger, a little bit faster, and that's definitely nice when you've got this much capacity going on. It's lightweight, 1.7 pounds, easy to put into a bag or pack. I tend to wear my backpack around doing these reviews. Press the power button here, comes to life pretty quickly, and there's a whole bunch of screens, so you can, you can arrow to the left or the right to get to different screens. Plus and minus gives you more or less assist, so more power output, and then there's this little select button there. So that's what the button pad looks like. Fairly reachable here, a little bit of extra space because of that horn button, but it's tactile, so there's kind of a click when you press it, like this, so you scroll through, and starting at the first menu, this is the one I tend to stay on. It's got this like loop-de-loop -loop thing and it's colorized. So it's gray right now because I'm in the lowest, well, off. Now I'm in the lowest level of assist. It's eco, green, tour, sport, turbo is red. So even if you're way up here and you're not really able to read the display, you can get a sense for what level of assist you are just based on the color. I love that they've got a battery infographic that also shows percentage. So it's super fine increments. Some of the other displays, in fact, the default in Tuvia display, it just has five ticks. So 20% steps versus 1% steps on a percentage readout, I love that. Clock, got the headlight indicator, which the headlights kind of come on by default since this is a speed pedelec. I was talking about those side windows before. Just the way this is aimed, it's kind of aimed down and it's got a cutoff so it's not gonna blind people, like oncoming traffic. And now I'm gonna arrow to the right and show you some of those other menus. So you got clock, range, range is dynamic, so based on your last mile of riding and the charge of the batteries. This battery is only at 78%, it's saying 43 miles at the highest level of assist. That's why I estimated 60 before. We take it all the way down to eco mode, it says 95, so you kind of get a sense for it. And it's gonna be different for everyone and your tire pressure has an impact, so many factors. Trip distance here, ride time, 
power pedal cadence and the Bosch Motors performance line does support up to 120 RPM so you can pedal fast and the motor doesn't give out on you. Some of the other motors do, uh, even some of the lower end, I shouldn't say lower end, like more city or just relaxed motors, the active line from Bosch, they support 100 RPM and then 105 depending on which system you've got. This also has shift detection but it's actually wired in so in this case it shifts and it stops the motor completely based on the integration of the electronic system. That's very fancy setup here to keep going. Average speed, max speed, and then this like quad one that gives you all kinds of feedback, including heart rate. Heart rate is cool. There's a Bluetooth integration here. So you might have, and it, maybe is it Ant Plus that they use for the, the heart rate? That's right, yeah. And, um, and currently there's not an app that's out for the bike, but there should be one coming pretty soon. So we're we did a video on this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's in the forums, you guys. So if you want to know more about this display, I'm kind of going deep here because this is a is a pretty nice bike. But back in the EBR forums, I've got a link to a video where we go over this and we actually plug something into it and show that it does put out five volts, um, one amp. Yeah. So it's like a thousand milliamps versus 500. It actually charges like iOS devices. Some of the other bike displays do not. Here's the double battery window. This is really cool. So you can see how full each battery is and see how close they are, 78 and 79%. The bike balances the batteries. That's a really nice thing that when it's charging and when it's discharging, so it's not like you're gonna be cycling this one again and again and again and kind of wearing it out. And then this one's getting no love. That's one of the fancy pieces that really, Bosch is like the only one I know that does that. And then settings. So there's a select button. We've got all kinds of settings. There's like a tour mode in here, Bluetooth connection, more information. Uh, what else do you want to say about the display while we're on this, Chris? Do you feel like we've covered it pretty well? or? Yeah, uh, well, one of the details specific to the roll-off um, is that we can set the start gear. So when you come yeah. to a stop, you can actually set the, uh, the, the start gear on there. And let's just go back to my e-bike. Let's say e-shift. There it is. Yeah, e-shift. E-shift. And the start then... Gear. So right now it's set to start gear five. You can set it to four. Um, I think, yeah, we would need to. And you can, you can turn it on or off. So if you want to start gear to work, leave it on. If you want to just have full control all the time, you set it to off. And then you could set, if you want it to start on one, you could have it start on nine. I usually have it on four or so um, mm -hmm. in, a, in a relatively flat environment, but maybe you're in a really hilly environment, you want it to be a little bit lower. Two or three. Yeah. Or you want to be just super efficient. The reality is starting in a lower gear would be more efficient. It's just going to take a little bit more shifting on your part. Yeah, yeah. And the shifting is like lightning fast and there's multi-shift. So can you do the multi-shift thing? Like Yeah, so this is individual. And then if I hold the shifter. Yeah. So it'll do three at a time. And it seems like it, there's kind of four total because they're like, rah, 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 right? Right, so what happens is sometimes if you're holding it, it will do one and then it will do another three. Yeah. So it's, but it's actually, it, it's doing that skip of three times. So the first one is getting the initial one and then yeah. it's doing three. So, um, and that's rad. I mean, you can go through like your whole range of gears in just like a few of those. Like, That's right. Da 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 da. It's like a race car. Yeah, and one other thing to note um, re relating to roll off specifically is that now they have an Android app that you can use to actually update the system. Huh. So it's kind of independent. Actually, even if you're uh, as a, a, the owner of the bike, you can actually update the roll off system, and they're constantly improving it. And who knows, like what settings they could actually make available over time. Uh, or even updates that they might be able to do auto shifting going the other way. Uh, <laughs> who knows? I, I don't know. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. But, and Bosch did have like a shift recommendation uh, readout. And they, they, I think they still do on their Intuvia, which is the grayscale like right. default display yeah, with this there. bike, right? And uh, we have it over here. Yeah, okay, cool. So this is what it looks like. The Intuvia, I love this display, right? It still has a little charge thing on the side. And did they say they updated the firmware so it does charge at it? An amp? Uh, this one is this one, to my understanding, is still the half. Still amp. half an yeah. amp. Yeah. It's a nice display, right? And it it removable pivots to adjust the glare, which which the uh, Kiox kind of does not. It's sort of set up. This one's a little bit 
a little bit bigger and stuff. I like this display, but there's a little arrow. We're not gonna be able to see it because you have to be riding, but it arrows up or down. And basically it's saying, hey, you could be more efficient if you shifted gears right now. Maybe in the future, we'll see an integration with roll off where, especially with the electronic shifting, where it automatically shifts. If you're like optimized mode, you know, and it like just shifted for you. Things are possible. I mean, I think about the possibilities. I think about the possibility with the heart rate monitor integration. Oh, yeah. You know, and maybe there's a possibility that you connect your heart rate monitor and you actually have the assistance controlled based on your heart rate. That would be so cool. Just your cadence. You Keep know? you so, like, well, that's like the NVO low, right? The yes, there there has been versions of the NVO low that allowed for that sort of thing. Formerly um, New Vinci, right? We're talking about the continuously variable transmission here. That's right. Yeah. And so this is kind of a similar concept in a lot of ways. This electronic integration, the systems communicating through the CAN bus of the, of the bike. And uh, yeah. And, and I'm not sure if you showed these. The, um, the unit here because oh, yeah. basically the hub is exactly the same as a non-electric shifted version but it's basically adding this uh this little servo on here if hmm. you will is and there a battery it's uh, this one's wired into the the main e-bike batteries this one's running off the e-bike battery and at the moment as a lot of people ask uh it's only available on the bosch system so they've chosen to only make that that option available with bosch at the moment yeah. Who knows what the future holds, but uh, hmm. you know, that's that's the deal there. Isn't this cool, guys? I think this is so cool. And you know, obviously a purpose-built e-bike with internally routed cables, good cable management, durability. Uh, this is just kind of the everything bike. Um, and we have a step through like similar version. So this is the Nevo, right? And I just, you know, we showed the different colors and stuff like that, but you could still get long range. You could still have high speed, still have the internally shifting setup and you know it's it's slightly different this one has like a frame lock and everything we've reviewed this separately i just thought it was a very cool like complimentary bike um i but i do like this and you, you basically get the bottle cage bosses and maybe just like a probably a stiffer frame than that slightly maybe a little bit more masculine what's i know this has to do with the battery but where do you put that what's that for that's right. So basically, say for example, you want to ride with just one battery, but you want to protect the contacts on your battery. So you can remove the battery and then you can mm. actually install this rubber plug on the battery. This is a Bosch part and uh, you'll we'll find bike. it generally with a, a battery that you have just, you know, it's a dual battery option, but you yeah. have just uh, one battery on the bike. I love keeping my stuff clean and I'm also not a super heavy guy. So there are probably days where I might be like using this bike to commute to work and I'm like, my work isn't a hundred miles away. Right. So I want to make the bike lighter and you can ride this with just one battery. That is right. Yeah, right. Is it either slot? Is that, yeah? Uh, yes, you can ride it with either slot. I would probably recommend putting it on the bottom slot. For weight distribution um, and, and stuff. And then also for, for charging. Uh, by default, I believe you can charge it with the battery in the bottom slot, but actually if you only put the battery in the top slot and you plug into that port, it won't actually charge. Because it's like a, yeah, like yeah, a series so, or something. So that's, and that's actually something similar with some of the other uh, dual battery systems as well. We should point out that this these have block locks, so it like keeps you from bumping uh, the crown of the suspension fork into the frame. And I was teasing Chris earlier, because on, on this one, it's not set up to where the block lock happens before the bottle. So you could kind of squish your bottle and it might squirt up in your face, so be careful. <laughs> Although if you're, if you're really turning that hard, you got bigger things to worry about probably. So yeah, just other really cool hardware, like all over the, the bike abus locking cores with the metal like housing really nice stuff i mean it's just and this has the two-step battery removal we didn't do it we're already at like a half hour just on the spoken part of this review but the battery like clunks out and then you press a button and it gets the rest of the way so you don't have to worry about even that down to battery falling out you still want to be careful so you don't bump your fenders and i talked about how well the front one's attached but so is the rear one it's attached in multiple points so it's not going to be noisy the motor is listening for your rear wheel speed pedal cadence pedal torque it's just it's kind of like the everything like i said that's how this began it was like the everything bike and i think it's pretty cool yeah well, the the last thing i just want to mention is the difference in the 2019 to from 2018 please yeah um so 2018 one of the big differences in this bike specifically is the upgrade to electronic shifting mm. but an overall difference across the line for risa mueller for all their speed bikes is the addition of the the brake light sensors yeah and the horn which is 
just on their their speed bikes so they made that standard on all their seat speed bikes it's a requirement in Europe it's not a requirement in the US but they chose to just keep it the same through makes sense. all of those uh, yeah those bikes it's so, a it's a good cool. setup thank you for that yeah, I appreciate yeah. that it's part of the the beauty of working with someone who knows this stuff so well yeah so we'll just stow the kickstand here I have this suspension fork like completely unlocked so I'm gonna get that nice travel and I love how it's blacked out that's like an anodized coating it looks nice but it also keeps like chips and stuff from happening and it reduces stiction so here we go Now, believe it or not, I'm in the highest level of assist right now, and it's just super quiet because my pedal cadence is fairly slow. Now, I'm getting to this stop sign here, and I'm gonna do that multi-shift thing that we talked about before, so I just hold it. There we go, and it was already shifting. Oh, look at this, it gives me some feedback, so it says I'm in gear one now. When I start pedaling, it's gonna be a really high rate. And I'm probably at like over 120 RPM right now. I could explore that by going up to cadence. Oh, there it was, cadence. There we go, yeah, I'm at like 140 and it was still going. It just, it's not really able to give you that much uh, actual assistance at that level. So now I'm gonna switch hands with the camera, shift up, shift up some more, getting that nice feedback. Woo, even got watts. It's a pretty, pretty comfortable ride here. Just having that suspension seat post action. And uh, fairly steady. You know, I was talking about this before. It does come with that mirror, so you can adjust that. I think in, in two different positions where it's like swiveled up or swiveled down. And we kind of tucked it in before so it wouldn't stick out quite as wide because these are fairly wide handlebars, kind of a mountain bike setup. Here's the, the auto shift. There we go. So it did take a second, and that's probably good because you don't want it to auto shift if you're just pausing or track standing or something. So I was talking about how wide these handlebars are. Um, just going through some doorways and stuff, you want to be conscious of that so you don't scratch it or get hung up with that mirror. Chris, can we maybe trade bikes? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'd appreciate that. It's nice to get third person footage of the actual review bike. And I love the Nebo. Here we go, right. different display. All right, so okay. Looking good. And look at those reflectors on the stanchions, the lowers of that suspension fork. So visibility is a big thing for me. These tires don't have reflective sidewalls, but you do have the light with the cutout and you do have the reflector on the stanchion arm. I, I just, I think that's so, so awesome. And the blue is such a beautiful color. Okay guys, we're gonna get ready for a ride here. We've got the Bosch Performance Line speed motor up there up to 63 Newton meters of torque and it's a 22 tooth belt ring. Gates carbon CDX center track belt, really lightweight, durable, quiet, and then 20 tooth sprocket in the rear. We do have that electronically shifted roll off speed hub and it does communicate, right? So it's really cool when you shift, it actually lets up on the motor so you're not gonna get any kind of premature wear or just extra I don't know, just the, the rigor of shifting with extra torque. It's a smart system and it's something I've really enjoyed. So I'm gonna ride at the highest level of assist and shift through and just give you an idea of the speed, the noise that the motor might make, what it looks like when I shift gears. And I'm not gonna let up, so I'm gonna let the system take care of that for me. That's cool, at the very end there, I was holding down and it was shifting multiple at a time just to get me back to a lower gear and I get that nice quick start. Really, really awesome system. Definitely adds the price, a little bit to the weight, but um, 
the, it's the way to go if you're going for like durability and especially here there's no derail you're hanging down it's great for touring in that sense and especially with like this is kind of a you know it's a mountain bike it's like kind of a hard tail it's got those tires set up for like just a rigorous conditions chris i think that's just, just about does it yeah had a lot of fun out here like i said you guys got all the specs back at the website really appreciate your feedback and input have fun out there ride safe we'll see you next time